Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. I know I'm looking a little bit crazy. I'm also looking quite pale. Uh, I was experimenting with the brightness on my camera and I think I might have gone a little excessive. I don't normally play with this much color on my eyes, but I did pick up the e.l.f. and J. Kissa collaboration, and I just wanted to do a little video on it, play around, do a couple of looks, because it is a completely rainbow palette, and I just was in the mood to experiment, so I thought I would do it on camera. I did two looks today. This look right here, where I work more horizontally on the palette, and then the second look that I'm going to show you, I'm playing a little bit more vertically. So you can kind of see how I do that. So if you are interested in hearing my thoughts on this palette and seeing the looks that I create, then just keep watching. All right, so before I get into the tutorials, I do want to talk about the collection a little bit. So she has a brush set in the collection and an eyeshadow duo. The eyeshadow duo looks really pretty. It's like an eye topper. I wish I had purchased that, but I decided to pass because I didn't need it. Not that I needed this. But what really encouraged me to buy the palette is that it's based around rescuing dogs. And I absolutely love that. The theme on it alone I loved. And then what else I loved was I love a palette that is organized in this sort of matrix. I enjoy having the color theory done for you, organization of the different textures and depths. That's what I love in a palette and I just feel like this is a very user-friendly palette, especially because this is a rainbow palette. A lot of times your colors can get muddy and you just don't know what to do. For me, this lays it out in a way that I feel comfortable creating looks. So for me, I just think she laid this out beautifully. And then of course, I wanted to buy it because I wanted to support a creator. I think she is so sweet and she really does an amazing job and wears color in a way that I wish that I could. So I wanted to support her. I love her channel. I'm very excited to be playing with this for you guys today. Quick, quick, quick details about this palette. It comes completely white and then there is a sheet kind of to protect the shadows. The sheet actually has stickers on it. I put the stickers on the front and I decorated it and then the way that this is organized is, of course, like I said, that rainbow spectrum through color theory and also depths and textures. So the depth you're going to get in the middle row, the lighter colors you're going to get at the top, and then you're going to get your shimmer shades at the bottom. Now this palette is $20. Currently it is actually sold out, but you can be put on the wait list because they are going to restock it and it will be available at Ulta very soon as well. So if you did miss out on this palette, you are able to get it. If you want to see how I got this look in my second look, let's just get into it now. So here is what we're going for for the first look. I wanted to use as many colors as possible. So you'll see for the first look, I'm using mostly the top row and then over here for the shimmers. So my eyelid is prepped with MAC Painterly Paint Pot and the first color we're going to go into is Yosemite. And this is a great color because it works with so many different colors, shades, and tones. And this is going to kind of be our overarching color. So I'm just going to quickly apply a really light layer up high above my brow. Most of the colors are going to blend out to this yellow. Don't focus on mixing it with with other colors yet. It's just to have a yellow background over here. What I love about this palette is how you don't need to know color theory really to understand it. You'll see how the colors kind of blend out into each other. So if you just follow either this direction or this direction, your colors are going to blend. We're going to go into Peaky right here. I also really enjoy how this palette, you have different depths. So if you're working on kind of a more monochromatic look, you work downwards. And if you're looking for more of a colorful look, you work horizontally. It's not a revolutionary way for a palette to be laid out by any means, but I just love when a palette does do that because it just makes sense and it's so much more user friendly. And this look is going to have a lot of blending. So be prepared for me to go back, reblend all of that. And then we're gonna take Cannoli, which is the blue. And for this shade, I found what worked was a mixture of padding and blending. So I start off by patting this color down and then we'll work on blending it out. With this palette and with these shades, you most definitely need to take your time, pack a little bit, blend a little bit, pack a little bit, blend a little bit, especially if you're going for that rainbow look. And even now I'm gonna go back in with the green shade, blend these two, and we're gonna go in with the yellow shade, blend it out 
to that yellow. Next shade that we're going into is Sadie, and we're going to pack this out here. I wouldn't say that these mattes are the easiest to work with, but they most definitely are workable as long as you're using a light hand and going in little by little. I think if you go in too heavy, you can make a mistake and then have a really unblended look. So that's why I always think it's best, especially with a kind of a formulation like this. Just take it little by little, so just like that. Then we're gonna take a little bit of Yazamite on the brush and we're gonna work on blending these colors out. And sometimes what is going to help, just wipe off your brush or take a clean brush and then just slowly work it out without any color on it. I did want to add a little bit of depth in the outer corner, so we're gonna work downwards from Sadie and go into Pretty Girl. And this is going to go just on the outer part of the eyelid, just a little bit. And I'm going back in with Sadie to brighten it up. Next up, I'm taking just a touch of the yellow and I'm putting it just right in that inner tear duct, a little bit towards the end of the lash line. Just a touch. This yellow, by the way, really, really good. And then we're gonna go into Millie, which is an orange shade. And we're gonna put this in the middle. And then we're going to take some of Casey, which is a top red shade. And this swatched really bad, but when I'm using it on a smaller scale like this, it's fine. And I'm actually going to take a little bit of Casey and kind of use it to blend the edges of the purple. Now it's time to get to the nerve wracking part. I'm going to create a cut crease. I'm using my P. Louise base and I'm going to speed through this. So the first color that I'm going to start off with is Sookie right here. Now I was a little bit disappointed with the shade because it doesn't really have too much pigmentation. Like I wanted an orange shimmery color, but honestly it's more so just a shiny color with not much base to it. And then I'm going to go into Firefly, which is the shimmery yellow. And this, on the contrary, is very, very good. Very pigmented, very smooth. I really enjoy this shade a lot. So that's going on the inner corner. And then the next shade I'm going into is Strawberry. This shade, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I did struggle with it. I find it to be a little bit crumbly. It looks very textured on the eyelid in not a good way. It's really thick. I don't know, I just don't really love this shade. Shimmery Yellow is such a good formula. And then this one is just really flaky. You can totally make this work if you use your finger to spread it out. But for such a precise look, like I'm doing, I definitely struggle with it. So if I did a look where I just wanted this shimmery red all over my eyelid, this would look beautiful. Just use your finger, put it all over. But for precise situations like this where quite frankly, you need to use a brush, it's really not agreeing with me and it's really hard to work in. And I wanted to put the orange right in between, but it had no pigmentation. Next, I'm going to go into Confetti. And this shade is a better formula than Strawberry, that red shade, but it still is a it lackluster. It does take a little bit of building, but I don't mind it. I think it's fine. I am getting fallout if you guys can see, but that's okay. Then I'm taking Pretty Girl, which is the dark defining purple that we put down, down here. I'm putting that back to blend in the cut crease. Okay, and then take a brush, wipe away fallout, and it's just wiping away really good. It's not staining my face or anything. So I'm gonna do a liner and lashes, and I'll come back to show you the final look. Hi, okay, so I uh, forgot to show you the final look of the first look. So here is a random video of me speaking in the intro so you can see that look. And now it is time to move into the second look. As you can see, we've gone for more mermaid type vibes. It's a much more simple look than the first one. And we're working on dimension and texture with this one. The first shade we're gonna go into is Peaky, the lighter green shade. Make sure you tap off the excess. I don't want anything too crazy and this is going to start off as our transition shade everywhere all along the crease. Be careful with the base you're using with these shadows because if you do have a stickier base they can be a little bit harder to blend out so it may benefit you to use a base that is either powdered or just doesn't have a sticky finish to it. And while you're at it take that same brush if it's not too big and just run it along the lower lash line. And don't be afraid to go low on the lower 
our lash line because this is the peeking through color that we're starting off with. The next color we're going into is cannoli and we are going to work on patting that in the inner and outer corners. One thing I do have to say is these mattes pigmentation wise are quite impressive. I would say where they could use improvement is blendability but it still literally isn't that bad at all. That's just me being hypercritical but I, I'm definitely impressed with the pigmentation and the punch that these mattes give for 20 bucks really good and as you can see I'm just kind of using the brush and blending it out it doesn't have to be too crazy blended and I'm also going to run this right on top of the green trying to stay a little closer but it's okay if you can't I'm gonna blend it up and even into the center is okay to add definition we're going to go into Thatcher and this is going to start off the real depth and mermaidiness of this halo eye. Really blend it out. And remember to occasionally go back in with that green brush so that the green still stays alive. With a more precise brush, we're going into Bailey. This is probably the prettiest shade in this palette. Uh, one thing to note though, it is a bit crumbly, similar to that strawberry shade. Death benefits from either a wet brush or a finger, but it's still better than that strawberry shade. This formula is particularly reflective, but I think that's why it's the most beautiful shade in the palette. Though it's not the smoothest, it still is the prettiest. If I wanted some extra pizzazz, I would have wet my brush. I should have done that, but I'm just gonna take a finger kind of layer on top of that. I wiped off my brush and we're going into Reagan. This is the same formula as Firefly and I loved this formula. So I really like this green. Even though I love the finish and the reflex and the blue, something about the formula of this green and yellow shimmer shade is really nice. So I'm just putting this alongside the shimmery blue. This wasn't necessary. The look looks just fine with just the blue, but I wanted it to tie together the green elements on this eye. And then also to tie the whole look together even more, I'm taking that same shimmery green shade and I'm just lining my whole lower lash line with that. So it's gonna be completely shimmery, really beautiful. I put the colors underneath to pop through and work as a base. That just really finishes off the look, ties everything together, it makes it mermaidy. By the way, for my inner corner, Corner highlights. I'm using the Wet n Wild Hello Halo Blush Lighter in Highlight Bling. I'm just using this. So pretty. So I'm going to put on some lashes and I'll be back to show you the final look. I am absolutely loving this look. The first one was a bit out there for me, but when it comes to monochromatic kind of looks, I am here for them. I absolutely love this look. I think this palette definitely got tricky when it came to just applying a bunch of colors to the eyes at once. If you are struggling with this palette or don't know where to start, especially if you're not as comfortable with color, I would say working vertically would be your best. Pick a color story you want. Say I want to do the yellow. I would put a yellow in the crease, the middle shade in the outer corner to deepen, and the shiny shade all over the lid, and then you can kind of spice it up, and instead of just using one shimmer, you can put two shimmers on the lid. Things like that work small. You don't need to put all of the colors on your eyes at once. You can use use one color story and you'll be good with this palette. My overall thoughts about this palette, I really do think this is a great rainbow palette to have in your collection. If you don't have a lot of rainbow palettes and you're not comfortable with color, I think this is a great introduction to color or just something to have in your collection to add color. I think the price point on this is very, very good. This works better than a $20 palette. Do I think it is up with my Viseart Grande palettes? Absolutely not. It's not as good as those, but this lays the colors out beautifully. Beautifully. It gives you direction on how to create a look, which I think makes it even more inspiring for me to want to create more looks. And if you want to incorporate a rainbow palette in your collection, I think this is a really good one to go for. If you were to ask how I would personally improve this palette or improve the quality, as far as the mats goes, their vibrancy was really impressive, especially given the price point. I would say there were some elements of the colors that were a little bit more difficult to blend, but that can be easily 
saved with technique which I would say pat it down and blend take your time have a clean brush on hand to spend a little bit of extra time blending it's not a formula that's going to do the work for you but you can get it done there's certain pairs of shades where I do wish there was a little bit more differences like in the orange row I wish there was more depth in this shade and then as far as the quality of the shimmers I feel like these are kind of hit or miss I wouldn't necessarily say they're misses but you need to use a finger or a wet brush to really get the most out of these shadows I thought like this shade was kind of chunky on the eyelid Bailey is beautiful but again it can be a little bit chunky confetti I didn't think was the greatest this shade it didn't have too too much pigmentation these two are great I don't know what it is about the formula of these two, but they're spectacular. So yeah, there's some inconsistencies in the palette where I feel certain colors work better than others. Overall, there really isn't a horrible shadow in here. It does what it's supposed to do, and I really love Jay Kissa for going all out for this palette and creating a really beautiful rainbow palette. It was curated perfect. So I did just kind of one up, play with that palette, show you guys a couple of colorful looks to hopefully inspire you. If you have any questions about the palette, don't hesitate to ask it down below. I will try my best to get back to you. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I hope you will take the time to do so. That would be lovely. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.